What is up guys? Welcome back to another episode of The Jeremy Kirsten Show. Today we're going to be interviewing Yannick Weiss. He is the co-founder of a company called Hype Fury, which is a Twitter uh, tweet and thread automation program that has a lot of other cool features too. So we're going to be talking about some marketing, marketing tactics, how you can use Hype Fury to increase your growth and audience on Twitter and uh, particularly maybe some other platforms as well, some cool things with Instagram. So uh, stick around if you're looking to grow your personal brand or business online in your online presence, this might be a good episode for you. All right, guys, before we get into that interview, real quick, I want to ask you to subscribe if you haven't already. Um, make sure you hit that or smash that like button and uh, turn on the notification bell so you'll be notified each time we upload a new episode like this. And uh, with all that being said, let's go ahead and get into the interview. All right, guys, uh, we have a special guest with us today. His name is Yannick Weiss. Weiss, Weiss. And uh, he is uh, the co founder of a program called Hype Fury. And Hype Fury is a Twitter automation program that helps you automate your Twitter threads and tweets. And so welcome to the show. Thank you. Great for, uh, for having me on, uh, Jeremy. Yeah, absolutely. So I guess let's just get kind of started a little bit in how this um, program came to be. Now, from what I understand, the founder, Sammy, he kind of was looking for something, correct, of, of how to uh, post threads, um, like, like in a more automated fashion. Is that correct? Yeah. And I think even before that, he had his like his own uh, fitness coaching program that that was his, his introduction to um, like the entrepreneurship. He was a programmer already. So he did that on the side and he was in all sorts of mastermind groups and stuff like that. And then, you know, he was pretty active on Twitter. And one day he, you know, thought, hey, is there actually a, a tool that lets you schedule threads? And, you know, there was none. So that was actually, you know, the, the trigger to create Hype Fury. Wow. Now, was, was Sammy already a programmer, like as a professional trade, or was he doing it kind of just as a hobby on the side? No, professional, yeah. So. I th well, I, he has about between five and eight years of experience, I think, something like that. Yeah. So, yeah, no, he he did that professionally. He was just uh, as a working as an employee somewhere, and mm -hmm. um, yeah, he thought, hey, this might be a great thing for a side business. Yeah. For sure. Um, I guess the, you know that makes me uh, wonder what 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 language was this program written in. That's a good question. Um, so we use Vue.js and we host it on uh, Firebase by, uh, by Google. And our marketing website is just uh, you know, a, a plain WordPress website with uh, Elementor and stuff like that, so yeah. Okay. Um, about how long ago did you guys start you know, putting together a team? Yeah, so Sammy started in August 2019 and then a couple of months later beginning of this year like january that's when we got into contact he posted a uh, message on indiehackers.com forum and he was asking for someone to help him with um, with growth i just happened to see that message got into contact and we started talking over the phone and uh, I flew to Paris a couple of times and I did like a quote unquote internship, you know, just to show that I know, I'm just not all talk, but also, um, um, yeah, I can grow a business. And after a couple of months, you know, we worked together. He saw that I could grow the business and, you know, we worked together and we, you know, not only um, saw like what path we should take to to grow the business, but also, you know, we had a good uh, relationship a good click 
and that's when we yeah decided to to officially like create the business before that it was just more like yeah unofficial uh, uh it was just, it was like 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 it was just a tool that he was using on his own well not that um it, it already had uh, revenue when i jo- joined it was i think a, a little bit above a thousand uh, dollar mor at that time but you know it wasn't really like a a the, the legal stuff wasn't all taken care of yet so that's we did that you know um, after we joined and then uh yeah we started hiring developers and customer service people and uh yeah okay so you were definitely brought in for like the business development side and, and kind of getting things more uh, official and um and and i presume kind of start recruiting is that correct that also yeah so my experience is just really like the digital marketing side of things and i i had a startup before this one it was like a the dutch uh, uber for service professionals so if you wanted to have a plumber or an electrician because you had i know leakage or something like that you could just you know tap on your phone and within three clicks you know uh, 30 to 50 plumbers within a 10 mile radius would get your a job and uh, I led growth for that company, scale it to I think about 3 million ARR. And yeah, so that was my experience I had. And yeah, I, I, I'm using that same experience to grow this company. And I was looking for people to help me grow. So we have a couple of people who do marketing right now and customer success and Sammy is more responsible for hiring of developers. We have quite a few developers, mostly who are part time, but you know he manages that hiring process because you know I can I can look at code, but I can't really read nor write code, so I'm not really the person to to hire those people. No. Makes total sense. Uh, yeah, that was actually one of the questions. Well, you've already answered a couple of the questions. I, w- I was going to ask how you and Sammy kind of knew each other, but you said you met in that forum and um, kind of touched base like that, connected. And um, and then I was also going to ask, you know, is is the majority of your team part time or full time? And you've said that most of them, the, the you know, the developers anyways, and some of the marketing are also part time. Yeah. So, so that's very cool. Um, <clears throat> let's see what else. I guess, um, what else did I have? Oh, while you were talking, I was thinking, all right, so that the app that you were working on, um, you were no longer part of that? No, no. So uh, after a, a year of three, you know, I, I uh, yeah, I, I sold my shares and I, just, I uh, thought, you know, it's time to move on. And I was in between. So I, I did that for about three years. And before I started that, uh, business. I did some freelance consulting and I went back to that just to, you know, get my bearings again, see what I wanted to do. And while I was consulting, I was consulting at a, at a bank in the Netherlands. I met Sammy and then, yeah, things started to uh, to uh, go in the direction of another startup again for me. So it was nice. So, so when you were consulting, you said with a bank, right? Was that, yeah. was that also like digital marketing services that you were bringing to them or what? Yeah. So there, what I was doing is, so it was a pretty big Dutch bank and they have different types of people they want to market to. And I was responsible for leading a team that was marketing towards people with a lot of money, like more, you know, people with you know, at least a hundred K in the bank or 250k mm-hmm. even and people who have like um or people our age but who are like high performers they earn at least like uh, 100k a year and i was responsible um for marketing towards those two um yeah groups of of, of well niches if you if you will so uh, we did online marketing uh, campaigns for those we created pages on the bank's website to uh, communicate with them. And uh, yeah, that was basically what I did there. Yeah. So like a product owner slash digital marketing uh, manager. Yeah. Okay. So let's talk about high fear a little bit. <clears throat> it's, it, it, it stemmed from the idea of wanting to be able to, uh, you know, automate some threads, but what else can it do? 
Yeah, so it's like it's really like an, an inch wide and a, and a mile deep into Twitter. So really the, the basic things and, you know, a lot of tools do like basic scheduling. You know, you can use TweetDeck for free just to schedule it, your tweets. There's nothing special about that. Mm-hmm. But what, what I think where we differentiate ourselves is that, there are so many little things that help you um, grow your audience. For instance, if you, if you tweet something, then some tweets perform well, others perform pretty shit. And you can decide upfront if a tweet, if this tweet performs really well, I want to plug something. So if you're, I don't know, if you have a couple of thousand followers, then probably you have uh, on average a couple of retweets, one, two, three, maybe five, but that's about it. And so when you say, hey, if this tweet does really well, as in if I get at least 10 retweets, I want to plug something, you know, I want to add a tweet, you know, like create a thread, add a tweet that says, hey, uh, while you're here, you know, uh, subscribe to my email list. Or yeah, and, my, and, and, uh, course. and I've seen some I've seen some things like that, but it's, it's interesting that your program will it automatically I'm, and, and I'm assuming what do you set like a threshold so like you said that you know that number 10 is that a number that you plug in and say these are my parameters yeah so you as the, like the account owner you decide you know you know your audience you know what kind of engagement to expect and you set that threshold you know so for me it would be I don't know like 10 retweets or something or maybe 15 but for somebody else it would be two or and another person would be 100 so you set the threshold and why we want to do that is because you want to ride the impression wave before it dies out you know so some tweets they die out at just a couple of retweets but others they explode and really go viral and you don't want to you know in your bed or when you wake up in the morning see all those retweets and and you know you didn't um uh, yeah uh, how do you capital, capitalize on the amount of people that saw that tweet. So that's, that's one of the things. And then, you know, you can also set a threshold to automatically retweet the tweet. So let's say the tweet did really well after a couple of hours, then that would be a reason to retweet it again. So more people will see it. You know, that's, that's the thing we do. Um, we're pretty active, like in, in money Twitter, if you say so. And a lot of people, they have Gumroad courses and we are, aud- Automate their Gumroad sales. So you could say, hey, today I'd like to sell 20 copies, uh, 30% off, and we would do auto countdown and, and stuff like that. So it would be an, a sales on, on autopilot. Wow. So, we need, so for anybody who's selling either a digital product or, um, you know, some, yeah, or, you know, definitely brand building, this seems like something that would be a pretty powerful tool for them. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, we, there are people who they, they don't even use High Fury a lot. They just use like the evergreen function. And the evergreen function is where you say, hey, these tweets are, you know, they're as true today as they are next year. The tweet has done well. I'd like this tweet to be retweeted every now and then. So you can select any number of tweets and we randomly pick one of those tweets. And there's a guy who doesn't even use High Fury except for that feature. And because attached to those tweets are his plugs, you know, are buy my course, buy my ebook, whatever. And he actually makes money just off that feature, you know. So it's, yeah, it's just a pretty powerful tool, especially for people who, you know, want to capitalize on their audience, you know, who want to create revenue from, from their followers. You know? Yeah. And I, I just want to help paint a clear picture for anyone who kind of wasn't understanding when he was saying, um, capitalize on that opportunity. So kind of like what you're saying, you wake up, you see that you've had, I don't know, 100,000 impressions on a particular tweet. And a lot of people who actually spend time in Twitter, they click into threads and they click into comments. And they, it's, it's, it's weird how we just naturally do that. But that is where a lot of times we kind of go in whenever we want to find more information. And if there's not something that's going to take you outside of that tweet to some type of landing page, some type of sales funnel, some type of a call to action, um, then you're missing potentially a lot of sales and a lot of user growth. Is that, is that a pretty good way to explain yeah. it? Yeah, that's exactly it. Yeah. And so, you know, the, the most, the most chance you have to reach people is, you know, when people are retweeting it, you know, if you 
after the fact add a tweet, which you can also do, of course. But and some people who have retweeted and engaged with the tweet will also see that plug of yours or that extra tweet you added as a thread. But you'll get a lot more eyeballs on that plug when you do it before you know it blows up. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, I guess let's talk about current users. Um, I mean, how many users do you have currently right now? That's a good question. I think we're at 650 or something. Let me check the bare metrics. Um, we have an open, um, an open startup, so you can just check our uh, bare metrics at hypefury.barometrics.com. But we're right now at 653 or something like that. Yeah, we just reached uh, 10K MRR as in cool. yesterday or something. So, yeah. Wow. Nice. Um, yeah, so, and I, I guess a lot of people are wondering how much does it cost to get started with Hype Fury? And do you have different tiered packages? Yeah, so um, we're going to change our pricing strategy in a couple of months. But right now, um, if you start, then if, you, if you're below 300 followers, because you know, we think that um, you know, the more followers you have, the more valuable a tool like us uh, becomes. But when you start out, you have less than 300 followers, you pay $9 for like the, the standard plan. And people who are above 300 followers, they pay $14. And then we have like the premium plan that's for the Gumroad um, stuff and then a lot more, but then you pay $39 a month. And if you, you know, get a yearly plan, you get two months off. Okay. Now explain Gumroad to me a little bit. I've heard it, you know, a couple of times, but I'm not very familiar with that. Yeah, so uh, in a couple of words, I would say Amazon for info products. So uh -huh. really, you can, you know, so the, there are a lot of courses there, you know, just how to be a better writer, how to create a uh, big uh, Twitter audience, how to, you know, get started with SEO, or how to get started with, uh, I don't know, investing, you know, it's so, so broad, you know, but also you can get subscriptions. So you get more like a community thing. Um, and you can really subscribe to uh, a piece of software. People build a small piece of software and you get through that uh, subscription on Gumroad, you get to get access or so. It's just, you know, a lot of different things, but the main thing you can buy there are info products, but on, you know, any number of topics. So is it, is it, is, is it just towards kind of like business marketing finance or when you say a number of topics, it could be really like anything, uh, really anything. So you can get like yoga classes or uh, I don't know, like uh, how to design a spaceship or really I, you can probably, okay. if you mention something weird, it'll be on there. Yeah. Or so, weird, just something out of the blue. Yeah. Right. Oh, uh, so, yeah, like the the online course programs or platforms that I'm more familiar with, and maybe you are, is like things like Udemy and yep. Skillshare and stuff like that. Um, so I guess Gumroad is a similar type thing. But uh, again, I wasn't quite as familiar. Yeah, this is similar, but it, it really started as basically like uh, hosting digital assets and then you know, being like a payment processor for me, like the little guy who can just, you know, upload. It could even be like one image I created or an, like an icon set, you know, that I'd upload and that people will pay, I don't know, $3 for. So I wouldn't have to go through the hassle of, I don't know, creating a PayPal account and getting that button somewhere and getting traffic and credibility and blah, blah, blah. blah. So that, that's, that's how it started. And now they are moving towards Udemy and, and Skillshare and stuff like that. They want to, you know, attract a broader spectrum of, 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 of products. Yeah. Hmm. Well, I'll definitely have to check it out. It, it sounds pretty uh, useful. Um, let's see. What are some of the current features that the users can look forward to in Hype Fury? Yeah, it's a good question. So I think one of our favorite features is, um, so we like index all the tweets you created and you know, it's, it's always hard to create new tweets. So what we do is we have an inspiration feature and that's our most used feature is people see an old tweet of theirs 
and they can see how many retweets and likes it had and they can then say hey i just want to copy this tweet or okay let me have a look at this tweet what was the concept i use how can i create a new th tweet from that you know so that's something people really enjoy using and they can just cycle through all their old, old tweets um combine it with a focus mode and i think that's what uh really separates us from other tools it's just you get in your own world of tweet creation. You know, it's just it's just you and like a blank page that allows you to create more tweets quicker and better tweets. That's I think an important thing we um, we allow you to do. And then there are lots of like small things. So what we do is some I don't know if you know Life Math Money is a pretty big Twitter account. I think he's up to 190 thousand followers or something. He told Sammy, hey, I have a an Instagram account or I want to start an Instagram account. The only thing I want to do is I want to have my tweets um, on Instagram. So as, as an image and what we built is just a, a feature where you just, you know, uh, toggle a switch and we actually create that, uh, like we call it an Insta shot. So we create an image from your uh, tweet. You can just upload it to Instagram in a few seconds. So that's something that's uh, really being used a lot. And then, um, yeah, so everybody knows probably that images do better on Instagram. You get more engagement on your tweet if you add an image. And so what we did is we allow you to create a quote as an image. Uh, so you could just take, I don't know, a quote from Churchill or whoever, from Steve Jobs, and just uh, uh, add that as an image. Mm -hmm. And so your tweet gets more engagement. And you know, we have a, yeah. A lot of stuff like that. It's just that, that's cool because you know it's it's little bitty shortcuts like that that save a lot of people time and create some value and stuff. I mean, I know I've done it myself. I've I've instantly, you know, I've I've tweeted something and then screenshot it and then go to Instagram and upload. So your program kind of cuts a little bit of that off, and that's that's pretty cool. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so exactly. Exactly. So uh, what else, uh, what am I not asking? What, what's, you know, I guess, what, what's something exciting? Uh, yeah, good question. Good question. What are you not asking? Well, um, yeah, I think what, what we're really trying to do is get people to grow their audience and we want them to get more sales. That, that's two important things. And that's, you know, something we're going to focus on even more. So right now we just have Gumroad, but we're looking into if we can get like a integration with uh, Shopify and if we get integration with uh, WooCommerce and stuff like that. So we haven't, we haven't built that yet, but that's, I think an important part of the next step of Hype Fury to create different paths for people to, you know, monetize their social media account. And that's, that's something we'd like to grow into. Uh, you know, it like be a social media monetization tool instead of like a plain vanilla tweet scheduler, which we don't think we are. But, you know, a lot of people see that as our main main feature, which which it is, of course. But mm -hmm. we'd like to differentiate ourselves a bit more to, uh, yeah, in that direction. So you want to be a little bit more integrated and like in partnership with some of these other companies. Is that kind of more or less what you're saying? Yeah, yeah, and you okay. know, it's, and it's 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 harder and easier for some because it's, it's Shopify. Um, yeah, so there already you'd have to create like a Shopify app. We have no um, no, no experience with creating an app like, like that, so we're looking into are we going to do that ourselves or are we going to uh, hire a developer? Uh, that's that's one thing we're looking into. Um, yeah, same with WooCommerce, we'll probably hire someone who creates like a. Um, a integration with us because uh, right now we're into like the info products but uh, there's a whole world like on pinterest or on uh, etsy or there are a lot of you know platforms that you know have creators on them but they're not really marketers and we'd like to be that that link between a creator and you know somebody who makes money yeah i mean that's that's hundred percent true. You can be great at creating the most perfect product, info product, you know, artwork, print on demand, shirt, you know, anything. But if you don't have a good um, system and getting that, that product and info product in front of people, then it's going to be kind of tough to make some money. Um, real quick. I think one of the last things I'm curious about is the, the name hype fury. Where did that come from? 
Yeah, that's a good question. Um, so, uh, so something Sammy came up with, you know, he, he, he wanted to be, uh, make it like a powerful name that people mm -hmm. remember. And I think uh, hype, you know, says a lot, you know, we just, we help people. Well, maybe not bec become, become like the hype, but it's, it's something we, we help with, you know, it's like, yeah. So I think those two, uh, words are a good combination of, of what we do. We want to be ahead of the curve, you know, and, and yeah, that's, uh, that's something we, we really want to show with our brand name. Fantastic. Um, well, let's see, I guess, where can people find more about Hype Fury and, you know, um, where can people find more about yourself? Yeah. So, uh, we're at hypefury.com. So H Y P E F U R Y.com. And that's the same on, uh, on Twitter. You can find us, uh, there as well. And my name might be even too hard to, uh, to, uh, <laughs> to find, but if you, if you look for, uh, Yannick is Y A N N I C K on Twitter, you'll, you'll probably find me as one of the, the top results. Fantastic. Are you pretty active on Twitter yourself? I am. Yeah, I am. I am. I'm on there daily and I, I schedule, schedule my tweets with uh, high pure as well. So, yeah. Great. Well, Unique, thank you so much for coming on the show today and tell us all about all about Hot Fury. Um, I do, you know, wish you guys the best of luck going forward. It sounds like you got a pretty cool niche and a good plan in front of you. So, um, yeah, like I said, good luck with everything. And, you know, I'm sure you guys will do well. Thank you, Jeremy. It was fun being here. Thanks. Absolutely. Thanks. Well, that's it, guys. Thank you so much for watching the interview with me and Unique Vice. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, let us know down in the comments below. Both uh, Unique and myself will try to answer some of those for you. If you have any other comments, suggestions, or want to see something else on the channel, make sure you leave that down in the comments below. Again, smash subscribe and the like button and uh, helps get this video out to other people. And yeah, that's pretty much it, I guess. And until next time, guys, take care.